Howdy. Welcome back to Dion Talk. Normally, my content is helping people reach financial independence, and my strategy and the Free Amigo strategy has been investing in buy and hold real estate. Today is going to be a little bit different, and I'm going to take something that I use at the company that I run. This is a question that I ask people I'm interviewing to find out if they want to work at the company or not. I have a few questions that tells me the role they're best suited for what their personality type is like, how they're best going to interact with the company. And sometimes if they're a sociopath enough for a management role, that's not the question I'm going over today. This is a question that you can actually use to find out something about your friends. And I want to do this with my two friends, Matt, the lumberjack landlord and Michael Zuber from one rental at a time, two investors who've been investing for over 20 years, who I've actually watched and followed to make sure I'm developing my strategies to, to survive things like the 2008 housing crash because they both invested through it. So what I want to do is ask you guys, and Mike, we'll start with you this time. Mm -hmm. This is a question that I use during an interview. Wow. You're interviewing for a position you want. So don't, don't just say, <laughs> I, I'm not going to answer yeah. this. Yeah. But, I don't, yeah. It's it, well, if, I don't know that if I would admit this in an interview, but this, this without question, I don't, I don't watch a lot of movies, right? So I don't really have a favorite movies, but there is one uh, there is one movie and it frankly changed my life. So, okay. So pretty big deal. Here's the question. Okay. The way I phrase it in the interview, hmm. what is your favorite movie and why? Yeah. So very simply said, my favorite movie is wall street. So it's the 1987 version. Cause I know there was a remake in 2000 or 2001. And the reason that is important to me is you got to remember I was 15 or so at the time, not yet driving, but I was working. Right. I was probably making 12 to 15 grand a year as, as a sophomore in high school, which was my, when I was 15, freshman or sophomore. So I, I was old enough to have my own money. It was frankly one of the times I felt rich uh, because, again, I had no expenses and I was making hundreds of dollars a week selling uh, craftsman tools. Then I see this movie, Wall Street. I'm sure I was on a date with, with some young lady. I remember explicitly saying, that's what success looks like. If you, you, if you heard some of my earlier videos, I've admitted things that I'm embarrassed about. One of the things I admitted very early on in the videos that I always saw a Rolex watch as a sign of being successful. Where did that come from? Wall Street. Why did I have to have a gold coin? Wall Street, right? They're talking, they were talking about gold. I equated it to a gold coin. That was my definition of success. Now, obviously, I didn't realize all that is Wall Street and all the things that are around it. But yeah, I looked at everybody on that screen as successful. I looked at myself as being unsuccessful. Uh, to me, money was power. Money was everything. Again, you got to remember I'm 15, 14, 15. I still hold that. I can still remember being in the movie theater. I don't remember her, what her name was, but I remember being there on a date. Yeah, Wall Street, 1987. So, so when you're a teenager, sometimes we will watch a movie or, or a TV show. And there are things that develop your sexual roadmap. There are things that develop your economic roadmap, how you see money. And this is, so this is a, a, you know, like a dig deeper into your answer. Sure. Do you think that movie contributed to you wanting to invest in stocks when you got up to the oh. almost $200,000 and then lost it all? Oh, without um, question. Most of it. Without question. Wall Street, Wall Street, the movie is what ultimately turned me up. So first off my college education, Wall Street, uh, my, the, the answer to wealth for somebody who's not an athlete, not a singer, not a movie actor, my opinion was stocks. It was the great equalizer. It was how the little man could take on the big man. You bet your ass it did. Perhaps so freaking lootly. Beautiful. Cool. So that, that's a, a strategy I use to get into kind of the mindset of the person that's interviewing for the job. Matt, same question. I'll phrase it exactly like it's an interview. What is your favorite movie? And why? Uh, the original Psycho. Uh, <laughs> Norman, mother. <laughs> yeah. uh, this interview's over. I'm out. <laughs> Management material. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You're qualified to be my boss. <laughs> um, my, I actually have two that are really close. And so Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross. Mm, yes. That speech Coffee's for closers. Exactly. Balls. Balls. Need to get those leads. Like, yeah. So it's the Glen Gary leads. I never wanted to be a piker. I never wanted to be the guy that showed up, punched the clock. Where are my leads? Where are my leads? I made my leads. And that's why I won every sales contest in any company I was ever in because I made my future. And so 
I love the way that Alec Baldwin treats these seasoned veterans, Mm -hmm. right? I was in sales once, tough racket. You know, I don't even drink, but I still do that move. Because that is, it's like, I know that is like boiler room type of sales. That is a hard grind. And if you think that that's what sales is like, you're correct. Yeah, exactly. Nailed it. (laughs) Yeah. It's not like these other fluffy movies. It is hard. It is a grind. It is exposing your soul on a daily basis. And it is every single treating every single lead equally, regardless of the name on the card and going in there and trying to convert them buy or die, lease or get out of the way. Like there's all sorts of sayings like that, especially in the software world. It's a really heavy grind. So that one's for that one. And then the other one is, is the original Star Wars, A New Hope, mm. just because I, I loved it when I was a kid. I set a record. I, w- I thought of myself. I said, you know what? I was born in 1977. And I think I was 10 years old when we could finally get that thing on VHS. And I said, I want to watch that as many times as I was born. I want to watch it in the course of the summer. So I watch Star Wars every single day and play with my Legos every single day that summer. And so I've seen that movie well over a hundred times. But as I look at the story, it's mostly like life. I won't say exactly only because Luke Skywalker does become a hero. He's, he's found in this desolate place where no one would think anybody's going to find this guy in a farm turns into the hero. The only downside is I thought I was going to have a super hot girlfriend found out later. It was my sister. <laughs> so, so that was a hard left. Thanks a lot. Empire strikes back. <laughs> that's why that's one of my least favorite movies. You jerks. That was horrible. I was like, man, now I'm going to have to spend time with an Ewok. Like, <laughs> Return of the Jedi. Yes, I know. Turn so, into yeah. an Ewok. Yeah. So, yeah. So, exactly. So, it was so definitely Star Wars, was, Star Wars and Glenn Gary and Lost were the two. Um, I get amped up when I watch Glenn Gary. Yeah, no, I, there's some I, scenes that's like, yeah. I have li- I've been that guy. In that room. Yeah, we've lived it. We've, oh, I've no. been that guy in front of the room, minus holding the balls because you're not allowed to do that anymore. Yeah, exactly. But I, yeah. But I've been that guy in the front of a room trying to convince these people, listen, either you sell or we will find somebody else who will. It's just that simple. This is what we're here for. Yeah. We're not. Yeah, the company is betting on you. Get yes. off your ass and do something. You can kill this. I mean, I've had those. Oh, my God. Yes. yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so I think it's really awesome. You guys, your movies that you identify with the most. I mean, I'm not sure about the Star Wars thing, but stocks, sales, things that you've actually used in your life. So if you're watching this video, I think this is something that you can actually use to kind of get into the mindset of your friends and family to figure out who those people are that think money, think stocks, think business, and the people who think Star Wars. Because there is an ultimate war of what's better, Star Wars or Star Trek. Uh, That's another video. Because we disagree. (laughs) I don't care. (laughs) All right. So if people want to reach out with questions that have nothing to do with movies, Mike, Mm -hmm. how can they find you? Well, thank you for asking, but I would be remiss if I didn't actually hear your answer to the question. So, Dion, what is your favorite movie? Uh, (laughs) I thought I was going to get away without having to answer that. Nice try, Dion. But not today. Uh, So I have had some people turn this around in an interview Mm. and ask me that question. Uh, (laughs) And I've decided I I shouldn't answer it. (laughs) I should say, I'm sorry. The interview, no, today I'm going to- This is not my interview. This is your interview. (laughs) I'm going to enter that. But in in, in the business world, the company, I'm going to have to start not answering it because it sets the tone for how they see me. My favorite movie. And I think this is one people should check out because it tells you a little bit about the psyche of the person you're asking. Yeah. Uh-huh. Is called The Count of Monte Cristo. This is a movie, a, a book by written by, was it Alexander Dumas, who wrote The Three Musketeers, The Man in the Iron Mask, those kind of books. Yes. Um, great books, great movie, because this is the story of a person who becomes so wealthy, they can dedicate the rest of their life to revenge. Oh, she's really everybody who's ever wronged them. Like we would call Matt's um, real estate agent that he's dealing with on that last deal. And we could say, okay, we're going to structure the next two years on making their life a living hell. And this is how we would do it and have wow. the resources to do it. So 
<laughs> in the workplace, it's I've not the best answer it. to give a new employee of oh, don't get on the wrong side because that's my goal, financial freedom, so I can have the best revenge. And then the the thing that sucks about life is, and I learned this from my dad later in life, the best revenge is living an awesome life. Yes. So so instead of all of the, the plotting and scheming to ruin someone else's life, I was expecting when I, when I reached financial freedom, I just sit back and go, I'm going to spend a couple months in uh, Florida doing some scuba diving. I'm going to go on a cruise. I'm going to go to Thailand. I'm going to go wherever. And then I'm going to look back at the people who wronged me and think, <laughs> yeah, so I'm probably going to burn it out for that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, re- I recommend postcards from every destination to that list. Of people. Nice, yes. Yeah, exactly. I yeah, just, here you go. Here's a reminder. <laughs> so uh, back to your question. Uh, one rental at a time. Uh, I go live 8 a.m. Saturdays. Awesome. Thank you. And Matt. How can they get a hold of you if they have questions? Lumberjack Landlord on YouTube and Instagram live stream this coming Sunday, and I'll go till the questions stop. Thank you both. Until my next video, thanks for coming to my Dion talk. So it was funny. That's actually that's that's an actual question we do during interviews, and I was kind of kind of joking during the video, but uh, we have the question to figure out who's a sociopath because. <laughs> The more sociopathic tendencies you have, the better management you actually make because you have to make decisions based on no emotion. No emotion. This, this is the deal we're going to go. Um, we had, a, we had a, a trucking school that started partnering with a company that we don't like. So I opened a campus next to them to basically say, we're going to put you out of business. Mm. And, and so you need people in sales positions that are personable and have emotions and can, you know, you know what does that reflect with people? Mm-hmm. But you need people behind the scenes that actually... Uh, make decisions without any emotional content at all. So this is the question that we ask. If we, if we get the, the sense this person might have management potential. So think about that. You know, don't answer this because we, we ain't got much time left while we're talking today after that video. Um, we ask the person, and it's a weird question. We actually say, this is going to be a weird question. If you went to your mother's funeral, so sorry, in this story, your mother passed away. Very sad. So we watched the reaction to even the thought of that. Mm. And at that funeral, you met somebody who was like your perfect match. It's weird. It's not a family reunion. It's a funeral. So you're meeting somebody that's like the perfect match. You guys click. You spend the funeral together. You're at the wake. Everything's great. And then that person leaves. And you realize you don't have their contact info. We asked the person, how would you find them? And, and they think it's, you know, how creative am I? Do I check the register? Do I do, um, you know, what creative strategies do they come up with to find somebody? So you can see, are they going to be a good fit? Do they, you know, I've had people say, well, if, if, if they try one or two things and then they give up and I go, oh, so you would just give up. And then they realize they're in an interview. So then they start being more creative. Um, and, and so <laughs> I actually never hit stop recording. <laughs> ah! We're sorry, the number you have dialed is not in service at this time. Oh, I wasn't going to let you leave without telling me your story, psycho. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Texas Chainsaw Massacre. <laughs> oh, too slow and not enough violence. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> There's an outtake. That's how we'll start this video. <laughs> Perhaps. But not today. <laughs> <laughs>